My name is Rory Sutherland. I'm the Vice Chairman of Ogilvy & Mather in the UK, and we're here based in Sea Containers on the South Bank in London. I also write a weekly column for The Spectator called The Wiki Man. My job is to persuade people in all walks of life that quite often the best way to solve a problem is by changing the way people think rather than changing physical reality. My greatest life lesson is really that whatever you do in life, try and be good at two things that are perhaps interconnected. So I read somewhere that you don't like the term career. You might say that the danger with career is it encourages too much forward planning. Let's be honest, I mean, half of the job titles in this building didn't even exist when I joined the industry. So I can't remember what it is, but I mean, there's a very large percentage of people in London who have a kind of job description which literally did not exist in 1995. Head of content. And so if that pace of change Exactly. The idea of having a career and planning what you want to do mm. as though you can mm. is really a little bit of a pretense. Mm. So what would you say to a young person today, like me, I mean I don't feel that young anymore, I'm nearly 30, but I feel nearly like, 30. Yeah. well I, feel, I don't know, no, okay. I feel like right. I have just dabbled in so many different things and I feel under a lot of pressure, especially you know when I was trying to get a job in the creative industry, in advertising, you know, they would look at my CV and be like, well, what are you? That actually is one of the worst aspects of employment, which is that we employ to fill positions rather than employing people and then working out roles around them. One of the things I would recommend is I mean, a certain degree of randomness, certainly early in your career, in the long term pays off yeah. because it, it gives you versatility mm -hmm. and it gives you breadth. Mm -hmm. The idea that um, the modern employee in truth has to be good at more than one thing. Yeah. Um, or at least you have to be very good and with depth in one thing, but you need to have breadth in a variety of related fields. Mm. You read classics at Christ College. You joined Ogilvy in 1988 as part of a graduate trainee scheme where you were named the worst graduate trainee that Ogilvy ever hired. Then you were fired from the planning department, sent to creative. Well, well, you... Yeah, I, I reapplied <laughs> in fact, I reapplied. Okay, yeah, yeah. you became a copywriter. Five years later, you were executive creative director of Ogilvy One. Yeah. And now vice chairman of Ogilvy UK. Uh, How? The fact that people's early stage careers are slightly messy or non-linear uh, shouldn't be in any way a mark of shame. As work gets in some ways more and more specialized, um, time spent dicking around finding out what it is you really want to do uh, isn't really wasted. Yeah. It may seem it may seem so at the time, but yeah. actually, a surprising amount of what I learned, even being a bad account person, mm. is still of, of value to me today. Mm -hmm. I think there's actually a very interesting problem, which I almost counts as a paradox, which is the more people want to make recruitment look fair and methodical, and rigorous, the more homogeneous it becomes. The only problem about applying the same criteria to everybody is that everybody you choose is then the same. The one thing I would confidently say is an extraordinary ability at anything is kind of interesting. To work as a decent agency, the mixture of people isn't just a byproduct, it's actually essential to the functioning of any agency. The one quality I, I always look for in people is curiosity. The one thing that would be a deal breaker I think in employing someone in an advertising department in a creative role would be someone who is fundamentally incurious. Mm -hmm. This actually brings me on to the Pepsi ad question okay, that yeah. I had for you, which is um, trial by social media and how basically, correct me again if I'm wrong, but everyone within the advertising industry saw that ad and was like, it's shit, this is wrong with it, that's wrong, that's wrong. Everyone outside of the advertising industry was like, what's wrong with it? There are some problems with that ad, which is what the hell's Kylie Jenner doing there? Yeah. It was it was a little bit too. I'll tell you what it was. It was kind of like it's it's some um, strategic brass straps were showing, and it didn't get away with it. And it's worth remembering that when you do any of that kind of issue based or um, what you might call mission based advertising, you're walking a pretty fine line. Yeah. If there are thousands of people misunderstanding your advertisement, willfully or not, you've got a problem. Yeah. What actually happens instead is that 10 people misunderstand it, express their outrage. Mm. In the old days, newspaper reporting actually involved getting out of the office and going and visiting people to canvass their opinions. And therefore, mad people with extreme opinions were difficult to find because there weren't very many of them. 
On Twitter, if you want to create a scandal, all you do is go, there'll be some mad people here. Oh, look, here they are. Hashtag blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cut and paste. Yeah. Put it in the it's newspaper. Too easy. Too easy. It's too easy. And it's the mainstream media, not the social media, that are most to blame because they take what is a totally minority whack job opinion and they make it seem a mainstream opinion. What we need to do is stop trying to actually create solutions around media. Instead, we've got to go actually go back to basics, understand human psychology, motivation, and what causes people to act as they do, think as they do, mm -hmm. and decide as they do. Mm -hmm. And we've got to go back to the basics of human psychology. And then once we've understood that, we can decide which, if any, of these new media might be appropriate to solving the problem. This is from your book. You're saying the most dangerous people were the stupid and energetic people, but the clever and lazy people ranked highly. In some ways, there's an aspect to laziness which is not totally disconnected from creativity, which is You'd rather sit and think about an easier way of doing something than plough in and try and solve a problem by brute force. Yes. So there probably is some sort of correlation in people between idleness and ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the things that fascinate you the most, other than trains and uh, curry houses? And <laughs> curry houses and true life crime uh, and <laughs> air crashes. Uh, yeah. Exactly for the, for the, the yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested in all of those four <laughs> to an insane degree. A lot of people in this business are, are weirdly fascinated by trains. It's as an well. autism thing, I feel. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I, I am a tiny bit autistic. on the spectrum. A little bit on the spectrum. <laughs> what is the most interesting thing you've learned about human behaviour? Probably the extent to which our actions precede our, our reasons. That um, a large part of consciousness seems to delude us that we think and reason and then act. The way we pretend we think, act and decide doesn't bear that, and the way we, we are convinced we think, act and decide doesn't bear much relation to the real cognitive reality. Where you direct your attention affects what you deem to be important. You can't control what you feel is important, but you can control where you direct your attention and thereby hack yourself into changing your priorities and the things that matter to you. Are you afraid of anything in the future? Every creative person slightly has that fear that they lose the ability to do it. I slightly worry about this. What happens when standards of appearance become so high that they become ridiculously time consuming? I think that's happened. You think, I think it's already oh, happened. Oh gosh. Now, I, wanted to have, I wanted to have rules in Ogilvy to save women having to worry about fashion that we'd actually, for four days out of every five, five fifth day you can all get dressed up, do your thing, right? Yeah. The, for the first four days, everybody would wear like overalls, a bit like, a, you know you know yeah. those headquarters of a James Bond school. villain? Yeah. James Bond villain, yeah. everybody goes yeah. around in, in red overalls. Yeah. You know, the great thing about those things is those villains Same didn't have to spend time. a load of time oh, going, do like I wear the blue uniform. overalls, do I wear the red overalls? That's the best thing Put about the going to school in. with a uniform. Yeah, so the overall oh, uniform is just, okay, okay orange here jumpsuit. it is, just exactly, orange jumpsuit, place would look fantastic. Numbers. Yeah, like prison that, that's style. nice idea, that'd be great. Yeah, creative department. Actually, that's not a Come bad on. idea. Come on! This is quite a good idea. Okay, quick fire. What's the best lesson we can learn from the past? Too deep? Don't worry about it. Are you successful? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, uh, it, to the extent which is if I fell off a cliff tomorrow, I wouldn't feel I'd wasted my life. Yeah. Have you ever failed? Yes, lots. What country is making the best advertising? It's harder and harder than ever to generalise. But Brazil and Latin America have always had uh, uh, some uh, fantastic stuff. Do you ever have shit ideas? Oh yeah, really shit ideas, yeah. <laughs> uh, not only that, you have to have some shit ideas. Yeah. The most vital thing in an ad agency is you have a culture where it's okay to fail or be silly. Creating a culture where in which you can make stupid suggestions and still get promoted. You didn't ask me Beatles or Stones. Beatles or Stones? Did you always ask Beatles or Stones? It's all quick fire questions. Beatles or, or Stones? Remote. No, Stones actually. Scrambled or fried? Fried. Tweed or leather? Actually, more tweed. <laughs> uh, the other thing with fried, you can make, I shouldn't interrupt here, you can make eggs benedict with fried eggs. It's better than poached. Really? Yeah. And bacon's better than ham as well. So it's basically a full English breakfast on a bun. What's the weirdest thing you ever had Tabasco on? I put Tabasco on virtually everything. So I put it on porridge. What food is not improved by the addition of cheese? Cheese. And the only one I can think of is the food that isn't improved by adding cheese. Probably prawns. 
you think? No, it could still work for me, to be works? honest. Oh, yeah, it would work. Hold on, hold on, and then we can end this. I worry about shit like this. This is terrible. Though. 